Welcome everyone to episode 7, I'm Solon, and this is Uncharted, Rainy Day Let's Play, you know, all that stuff. Anyways, we're gonna climb the fortress, this is chapter 5. In our last episode, we talked about what the meanings of uh, greed and fortune are within the context of the game, and what kind of things we can extract from that in our gameplay. Uh, and kind of to, to bounce off of that... We kind of got this shorter episode that we're gonna do. Ahead, don't look down. Yeah, buddy. You got yourself into this mess. Now you gotta, you know, find a way to get yourself out. Could go back. Could go back at any time after this point. Nope. Can't go back now. That was your your last opportunity. He says, thank you, God, but I feel like he just jumped into the frying pan. Anyway, so we're going to springboard off of the last episode about what it means to be greedy. And it actually comes off one of the, the questions we asked with the last episode was about uh, what does it mean to find these trinkets on the ground? And what does that mean for Drake? So through this adventure... We've been finding and collecting trinkets that have been strewn about all of the levels of this game. A simple and fine way of rewarding this kind of exploration-based platforming that they have within the game. Which we talked about in the previous episode, Naughty Dog is... That's, that's their thing, that's what they do, is creative and new ideas for platforming in a, in a 3D world. And so... What does it really mean as a treasure hunter to be, oh, be collecting these trinkets? And what does it mean as a player of the game to collect these trinkets? These are kind of the, the things I want to ask out of this episode. Oh, honey, this does look similar. I wonder if that's an actual jab to the level designers. <laughs> or like something like that. You know, it's just another wall of the fortress that we're going to scale the rabble around. I don't even know what those textures are that he's grab or okay, or not grabbing onto. <laughs> There's like these weird like cobblestone patterns, it's like you know, he's just jumping off and attaching to one of those. If you've ever played uh what's the game? Oh, GURP. GURP, G I R P Foddy's game called GURP. It's basically this game. <laughs> or at least a streamlined version of all of the best parts of this game. But what is he grabbing onto? Just, it's not like a chunk or a ledge thingy. But it's like a weird cobblestone bit. Alright. Either way, you kind of get this nice rhythm when you're rock climbing. Nathan Drake style. Of course you will. You couldn't, you know, you could just knock. Maybe someone's on, over there. <laughs> ah, I'm so ready to, you know, like, grapple a bear. That's, that's the sound that I heard after that. <laughs> All that energy. <sighs> okay, anyway. So, within the scope of the island, technically... Ooh, this is a fun toy which is a problematic way of calling a gun, but to each their own. So, I guess technically the only value that these trinkets have are really to explain that someone was here before us. Just like game-wise speaking. Maybe it was Sir Drake, or maybe it was someone earlier, like whoever left the original treasures here that Sir Drake is looking for, oh, for whatever reason that they did that. Either way, it doesn't matter because the only other value that these trinkets have are a ludological value or, or a gameplay centric education, I mean, yeah, kind of value to the player themselves. Go away! Go away, you guys! Go away, me. Okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea, but it was my favorite. So, ludologically speaking, collecting 
uh, or sorry, uh, to look at it from another angle. Let's just look at it this way. The only value that these trinkets have are outside of the actual island itself. They're outside of the scope of the island entirely. Any educational worth or monetary worth that these trinkets have are not actually found on this island that we're taking them from. They're all outside of the island. They're all in the real world, which is a terrible way to, to speak of it. It makes it seem like this is some kind of other place. And so I call this an exoticized value. Their, their value is found purely in their exoticness. Oh, I guess you can't, you can only use your sidearm when grappling off of a wall. Interesting. Can't just blind fire my shotgun. When I'm attached to a wall, I can, right here. No, this is silly, go away. Oh, this might not turn out well for me. Oh, oh no! Oh, this turned out wonderful! Oh god, I'm so bad at this game. Absolutely awful. In all the right ways. So, exoticized value. Ludologically speaking, collecting these trinkets show a, a domination of sorts of, of the tricky platforms and hidden crannies of the island. Just strictly game-wise speaking. Similarly, they also represent Drake's effect of colonizing the island. One part janitorial and another part investigatorial. So, what do these trinkets mean? Or, how do they go together? How much are they worth? All of these questions kind of create a worth based on exoticizing the piece, the trinket itself. It isn't just a ring to be wore for beauty's sake, or a totem to decorate and or cherish. It's an object from a faraway land to be collected. This essentially subjugates the cultural value of the piece, putting it entirely in the scope of Western culture. Drake doesn't wear the ring, he's got his own rings that actually have real cultural value. This is just, you know, a memento from the island. Or worse, they're just something to pedal off at the nearest university. If you're... Although, Indiana Jones, I guess, makes a point to be like, I don't want this just sold as I'm in... And then all of his stuff gets locked up by the government. You know, whatever. So, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe I'm making this a little more dramatic than it really is. And that might be true. But it was only the second episode when I proposed that Nathan had a way of dominating the world around him by calling the jungle his own personal gym. That wasn't an accident, that was... I mean, modern western colonization is a major theme to this game. From the way Nathan gets around in the game, to the way he collects trinkets, and checks them off his list within the trophies of the game, to the story surrounding Drake's arrival to the island, and the history around it. I mean, seriously, I'm telling you, it's, it's silver turtle idols all the way down. But, if we were real to the culture, we wouldn't call it a, a silver turtle idol. Perhaps, for example, because it was originally made as a game piece for someone's child to play with. Where does this silver llama really mean within the aspect of where it was found and what it comes from? So, I don't have answers to these questions, and they're not really meant to be answered. They're more questions to be questioned for the sake of making the question heard. Ooh, that was a nice one. You got some hang time. So, that's kind of my, my first take on what exoticizing this island means in within context of this game. Ooh, strike out. It's either very good or very bad. Or very good bad. Like a little bit of good, but also kind of bad. It's like a baddish, goodish, bugadish, like bluish, you know, 
All right, I'm taking the zip line. I saw that. You can't trick me. Zip lining. Action zip liner. And he sticks the landing. Elena, what the hell is she doing? Probably something awesome. Open up. Open the door. I guess it's probably. Captain, open the door. The intercom's still on. Okay, that's pretty awesome. He thinks he's all smug and getting stuff accomplished. <laughs> Ooh, we got a nice gun up here. Hopefully, maybe I'll just screw it up. Six shots, great. There's no way this could go wrong. Well, I don't want to waste a bullet on the lock. Crap. Okay, well, we'll just have to grab the gun and stick it in there or something. Alright, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, <laughs> these guys are, or Nathan Drake's act, acting all like smug and stuff, and these cats are like, guys, he's right there. It's almost like they had some way of knowing where he was, and where he was coming from. Almost as if they had like, walkie-talkies, or some kind of crazy, fangled communication device to say, there is a lunatic on the other side of this island murdering all of us. Someone please take care of him. <laughs> that, I, I guess that would actually explain... <laughs> that would explain why all these turrets have been set up so meticulously just to where I'm, like, headed. Even, it's just, it's just hard out there for an action hero. The bad guys are just getting too smart. Oh, I was probably supposed to climb all over the walls for that section. But, uh... Yeah. Oh. This is nice. I like your home! He's actually got a nice little setup over here. Poor guy. It's okay. He's in a much more unconscious place right now. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That's... This makes sense. Weird sideways angle shots. That'll come in handy. Okay. Anyways. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure to ask questions and comments down below, and I will see you in the next episode.